Mr. Amon, I wanted to ask you a question regarding the renewable energy tax credits. Um, as I talk to people um, during the campaign, uh, uh, many express big concern on the uh, time, and you talk two to three years, but I've actually heard that you know, most um, people in these industries actually look at something further out than that in terms of um, a length of time where we would really be able to have the benefit and see these industries uh, really flourish and grow. And could you just address that? I think two, two years would, would be anything better than one, but I think the number is five to, t to be personally, uh, because product development or project development in, in these large wind farms right around our area in western New York, they are a three-year, four-year from inception, from out there handshaking with the communities. Uh, the communities ramp up, and, and, and they ramp up for these projects. They get excited. They get mad. They get everything. They ramp up to this thing, and everybody from all the suppliers, the truckers, the gravel people, everybody ramps up to this, and then all of a sudden, time frames, and if somebody misses a time frame, and, and, uh, or if some a developer who's looking at different sites throughout the United States, if, if, one, if one can't be built in a time frame, they'll just resort to another. It, it really falls off for that community that loses out, the, lo the, the community that built themselves up, and then it's, it's just a decision, a check mark didn't fit, fit their box, and they, they, uh, they're off the, the, the table. But having a, a, a nice smooth, you know, curve of, of the production of of the of the tax credit not being there, limit being there, would you know let these people make decisions, make supplies available, make you know inv good decisions, and not be forced to uh, you know be behind the eight ball, um, and so so longer periods are, and it it, it helps with the with, with the communities and the the financial people. And I guess, um, and Mr. Theory, maybe you can address this because this actually has more to do with solar in terms of those I talked to. Um, competitively in a global world, actually, I think we're falling behind because other countries have put out tax credits up to 12 years, 20 years out. So the development of these products are such that um, some of our manufacturers are actually moving overseas for product development because of those incentives. Maybe if you could address that. Well, we're seeing that. And one of the interesting things was uh, this past fall we got invited by Performance Roof Systems. Uh, it's a company that's uh, based, has operations in Kansas City um, for, the, for the U.S., and they also produce over in Belgium. And uh, the tax incentives that they've enjoyed um, using their, their Derby White product, which is a reflective roof in conjunction with uh, thin film solar panels uh, in both Belgium and France, uh, they basically can't keep up with the demand for it because the incentives there and the return on investment. We saw some spectacular projects where um, it was Belgium's largest telecommunications center, um, uh, excuse me, television station. Uh, did their whole roof entirely in, in panels in a, in a solar project to reduce the demand on the community for, for electricity and, it, and it's working for them even in an environment in Europe, which uh, has many of the same cloud cover issues that we have here within the United States and the like, it's not a northern Northern Europe is still uh, very much like the uh, from D.C. North in this country, and uh, yet the projects still work for them, and we're seeing that development. I appreciate that. I just think it's time for some bold action in this area, and I think uh, further tax credits would actually help us to get.